The number of Africans living in China and Taiwan today has reached a historical high. The, um, they are mainly merchants, businessmen and students. The city of Guangzhou alone is home to 20,000 over Africans. Beyond the world of business, 500 to 600 students are studying in universities and colleges in Beijing. With us today, we have Mohamed Junior Afasal, who was born in Côte d'Ivoire and raised in Guinea and Morocco. He's with us today to tell us a little bit about how his business and him and his father's business came about with um, China. Well, uh, I think at the beginning, my father was working with a Taiwanese man and uh, they were for a long time during some six or seven years together. But at that time, it was around uh, 1990, 1989, you know, and uh, <coughs> They were working together till uh, he discovered China that they were selling the same product. But I know it's not the same quality, but cheaper than the one the Taiwanese man was selling in here. And uh, with the time, he tried to change because he's getting more profit. And uh, that's how he changed. He chose now for me to go there in, in, in China to do his business. That's how it happened. Uh, At the question. beginning, I was in, in, in Guangzhou. From Guangzhou, I moved to Yiwu. From Yiwu, I came to Shanghai. I didn't live there for long. And I came back to Guangzhou because Guangzhou was the center of those business and, and stuff they were doing there. That's okay, what I'm kind doing. of business is that do you do? Yeah, it's a, he got a factory of uh, tape, these tapes and mm -hmm. CDs, and uh, this, how they call it, textile. Uh-huh, textile. Okay, mm -hmm. textile. and. Uh, I used to buy some goods for him there to bring it to the factory before them to change it as a finished product. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's how it's very Okay. Yeah. And um, are there many, among many others that you know who are living in China? Yeah, a lot of them. Some Guineans, Gambians, a little of Gambians, just few of them. And a lot of Malians, Nigerians, and few of these Ghanians also. And people, most of those people started to go in China for business around 2000. Yeah, and uh, it's just because of the price, that's why they change, that's all, yeah, With the price. Chinese people, you can work with them, but there is no, how they call it, confidence. Um, there is no mutual trust? Yeah, mutual trust, yeah, that's why he wanted me to be there first, because they can work with transactions, with banks and stuff, but when they are loading their, their goods, they can put some fixed goods there, and like a TV, they can just put the the TV but there is nothing inside you know yeah so that was the reason for me first to be there uh, mm -hmm. I lost around uh, 9,000 US dollars mm -hmm. because yeah. of because of this woman who was selling me these goods and I was buying mm -hmm. it for my father and uh, I gave her the deposit she made the goods and everything but it was not the quality I asked her and uh, the time I was loading I was going to mm -hmm. Hong Kong to renew my visa and come back Mm -hmm. And uh, the time I came back, she she wouldn't want to wait for me to load the the things. So I called my friend, and my friend went there. So he doesn't know how the product is and stuff. So she just put what she wants, and I was not there. They load the container, and the container went back in Africa. So when it went back there, they, they did the count. They start looking at the product. They saw that it was not the same thing. And when we calculated, I saw around 9,000. Yeah. Yes. That's what happened to me. We need each other, but I think right now the why why I say that we need each other. Chinese they cannot they are trying to do that today because they are trying to bring their, their their goods back to Africa and rent some shops and sell it by themselves because they know that there is more profit if they are doing that. If they got a factory and they got a shop in Africa, they can ship it by themselves and get the profit. People got to get it there. They were starting to do that, but recently they started to stop them because it's it's not fair, you know. Yeah, so they just have to sell us, we buy from them, and we go, we sell it in our country. Normally, the best way, the best way is for them just to stay in that country and sell it, and we buy from them, and we go in our country, we sell it. They have their own way, like Asia, Europe, you know, because they are creating something. And we Africans, we are not creating. That's why we are going back and back and back, everything. They are not creating, and... You are selling your raw materials and yeah. the return... You buy from them, you find the money, you buy from them, you come and you sell that. 
if there is a way for Africa to do business, that kind of business, I told you that we are not creating. Unless if you start creating. That's the same, the only one way. If you start creating, we can do our own business. But without that, it's not possible.